be a good day. Even if I make it myself, it's gonna be a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm gonna have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm gonna have a good day. Hope you have a good day too. Good morning. I'm Trish Pahanik, and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. It's Friday, February 2nd, 2007, and here is today's top story. Well, with the appointment of Greg Mydell as its new president just a couple of weeks ago, My Network TV is making yet another change, this time to its primetime schedule. As of March 8th, My Network TV will air telenovelas on just two nights per week and will add an international fight league's total impact and two movie nights. The network will also drop its weekly telenovela recap on Saturday nights in favor of an encore edition of Total Impact. Here's the new Monday through Saturday schedule, and feel free to grab the full broadcast primetime schedule from the homepage at www.synopsis.com. On Mondays from 8 to 10, IFL's Total Impact. Tuesday nights, 8 to 10, American Heiress. Saints and Sinners on Wednesdays from 8 to 10. On Thursdays, my Thursday night movie. On Fridays, my Friday night movie. And on Saturdays from 8 to 10, IFL's Total Impact uh, Encore presentation. We have more good stuff coming up, but first this message from the Jaconi Bed and Breakfast. And remember, if you had a promo or a commercial in this video, we'd all be watching your stuff right now. Coming up under Morgan Stuff today, update on the cartoon terrorism in Boston, Dr. Keith Ablau will not return next season, NBC re-ups with Last Comic Standing, and ABC orders up new reality series, The Golden Cage. Peter Burdowski, 27, and Sean Stevens, 28, were both arrested and arraigned yesterday morning in connection with their involvement in the Adult Swim guerrilla marketing campaign that brought parts of Boston to its knees on Wednesday. The duo were charged with placing a hoax device and disorderly conduct. Brodowski said, quote, I find it kind of ridiculous that they're making these statements on TV, that we must not be safe from terrorism because they were up there for three weeks and no one noticed. It's pretty commonsensical to look at them and say, this is a piece of art and installation, unquote. The same marketing plan was deployed in ten other cities, including New York, L.A., Chicago, Atlanta, San Francisco, and Philadelphia, with little or no reaction. In fact, the devices were removed by passerbys in some cities and are now for sale on eBay. All the fuss makes you wonder, did Adult Swim get just what they hoped for in all this publicity? You'd imagine it's got to be a check in the win column for guerrilla marketing firm interference. What remains to be seen is the potential legal and financial fallout. Warner Brothers domestic television distribution syndicated series Dr. Keith Ablow will not return for the fall uh, for season number two. The show will continue to be produced and provided to stations for the remainder of the current season. The second season finale of Bravo's Top Chef Wednesday night at 10 o'clock had 2.8 million adult 18 to 49 viewers tuning in. Immediately following the series premiere of Top Design had 1.3 million adult 18 to 49 viewers, marking Bravo's biggest series premiere ever. 
NBC will return with a fifth season of Last Comic Standing this summer. Hosting the event will be Bill Bellamy, and talent scouts for this uh, round will include Kathleen Madigan, Ant, and former comic contestant Alonzo Bodden. The show will have a decided international flavor this time, as it holds auditions in London, Montreal, and Sydney, as well as several U.S. cities. On to production and development, the New York-based independent production company, Engel Entertainment, will produce a new series for Discovery Health entitled Get Fresh with Sarah Snow. The 18-episode, half-hour show has the natural living expert showing viewers how to create a healthier lifestyle through small, easy changes. Get Fresh will air on Thursdays at 8 o'clock. BBC America has a new six-episode drama series in the works called Whistleblower, from Carnival for ITV in BBC America. The plot centers on two lawyers who uncover a secret government policy involving deals with suspected terrorists, and they decide to leave behind their legal careers to help the people who expose the cover-up. ABC has a new reality project in the works called The Golden Cage, from executive producer John DeMall and his Talpa Productions, reports Variety. The game is pretty simple. Ten contestants live in a high-end mansion with all the trappings of the filthy rich, servants, lavish parties, great food, etc. The thing is, they can't leave. Competitions won during the course of their stay provide them with visits from family and opportunities to leave the house for a short time. How long the game lasts is entirely up to the ten contestants because to win the game, you have to be the last one living in the house, and the winner gets the house and a cash prize. Players leave the game either of their own accord or when all the other members of the house vote them out in a bi-monthly firing session. Uh, if this all sounds a little like Big Brother, but with money, it is. Damal created the original Big Brother in Holland more than ten years ago, and Big Brother's first title was The Golden Cage. ABC is cast Rochelle Le Fay. I don't speak French that well, or actually not at all. Um, they've cast him in its David E. Kelly drama pilot, Life on Mars, from 20th Century Fox TV. The story is about a detective who transports himself back in time to 1972 to find his kidnapped girlfriend. Le Fay plays a cop in the 1972 police department who befriends the detective. The NBC drama pilot, M-O-N-Y, about a public advocate in New York who temporarily becomes the mayor of the city, has cast Bobby Cannavale in the lead role. The show is from Levinson, Fontana, an NBC Universal TV studio, and the pilot will be directed by Spike Lee. Well, here's the rating summary for Wednesday night, according to Live Plus Same Day Ratings from Nielsen Media Research. Fox maintained its Wednesday night lead with an 8.822 adult 18-49. Fox had a good showing at 8 o'clock with Bones, winning at a 4.211. Then at 9, Fox surpassed the rest with American Idol delivering a 13.431. NBC came out on top at 10 with a new episode of Medium at a 3.49, just a little in front of CBS Encore of CSI New York at a 3.28. Today's Daily Myth... Rubbing lip balm on a Scranton standardized test sheet will produce the perfect score. Bad rumor. This was started years ago when it suggested, suggested if you rub lip balm or lipstick anywhere on the standardized testing answer sheet, it fouls up the machine, therefore marking all the answers correct. Alas, marks on the page other than penciled bubbles cause the machine to mark everything incorrect. But nice try. Well, that's going to do it. Be sure to check your email for the full printed version of today's synopsis with new executive moves and more on ratings, loads of new classified ads, and a few other stories that didn't make it into this podcast, and of course, tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. The music and synopsis was composed and performed by David Stango. This podcast is a synopsis media production in association with 311 West. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled synopsis in Connecticut, I'm Trish Pahonik. I'm going to have a good day. If I make it myself, I'm gonna have a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm gonna have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm gonna have a good day. Hope you have a good day too.